Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and here's a little preview of what we're doing today. So let's get started. Today I'm going to just play, I think, and I'm going to do some intuitive painting, just what feels good um, to me. And I want to experiment with these So Flat paints by Golden, these matte acrylic paints. And I've not really played in those at all, and so I thought, let's just pull out a few colors and play. And I'm working on a piece of Arches watercolor paper, 140 pound. You could use mixed media paper for this. You could use uh, Bristol paper, something that's kind of thick. Um, hot press paper would be fine. I just happen to have this by my desk and I like working on paper. People ask me, um, do I ever work on canvas or board? And yeah, I've spent years working on those too. Um, but the problem with canvas and board is they take up a lot of space. And as an artist, you know, if you're a working artist, you know, maybe you have figured out where to store all that stuff. But I live in a condo, and so my space is kind of limited to this is all I got. There's no backyard. I can't have a shed. I can't add to it. It's a townhome. Um, and because I don't have any desire to sell art. I like to make art videos and I use all these things as samples and examples and I play a lot and experiment. Um, probably going to shake these up a bit, but I've never played with all these colors. I just got these recently. But because my goal isn't to sell art, my goal also isn't to store gigantic canvases and stuff because that stuff takes a lot of space. And I used to work on cradled boards a lot in earlier classes a few years ago and canvas. And at some point, they were everywhere all over the place in my way. And some of them just got taken to the Goodwill because they weren't very good anyway. But I'm just saying, you got to figure out what, what are you going to do with all those big, thick pieces. And, you know, even big artists have lots of art stored. They make a lot of art. They store a lot of art. And if I'm going to store a lot of art and make as many classes and videos as my heart desires, then I want that art to be flat. It's something I can stick in a clear art sleeve if I love it and keep it pretty in that way. And then I just need a little Rubbermaid tote to store art in rather than gigantic pieces that I just can't do anything with. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this white out here because I'm put a little bit of this orange. Hmm. Kinda didn't want to spread that on the side of the tube like that. Could have thought that out better. But I'm kinda feeling like maybe working with the orange and maybe shades of orange here for a bit and just make some abstracts in a different style than maybe I've made on, on than I've made you know lately and just play and see you know where can we go with this and usually I like to mix um, gesso into my paints to make them flat. So if I'm using regular acrylics, I'm mix mixing a bunch of gesso in there. Um, but this is already flat paint, so I'm kind of thinking, all right, let's just see what we can do with acrylic flat paint, because you don't see me paint in acrylic nearly as much as I paint with starting with watercolor, because I like the watercolor. All right, so I want some more of this out of here. Let's see, let's just pull a little palette knife out. There we go. So I like all the mediums, but I kind of go through phases. And right now I'm in the watercolor gouache acrylic mix it up, mixed media kind of phase. And you know, in six months I might be in a total acrylic phase. And there's been times when I've been in an oil paint phase. <laughs> That's why I have all these different mediums in my studio because at the point that I'm like, here's what I'm obsessed with, then I tend to want all the colors. And then 
usually I want to narrow that down now with a color palette um, and then limit myself to certain colors which I feel like you are much more creative if you limit what you use but I for some reason I'm just I get so obsessed I want all the colors and then I'll pull a color palette and limit myself into what I'm actually going to be painting with um, okay so I'm kind of filling these this that was the cadmium orange titanium white this is naphthol pink and I'm just gonna pull some pink out here Whoa, look how pretty that pink is oh my goodness that's like the prettiest pink it's like I want this as I think it is my nail polish color oh my goodness see I like pinks and oranges together so even though I didn't pull a palette card today I thought let's just play I did pull blue and green out but I thought maybe a touch of that in these but I think I'm gonna change my mind and just <laughs> ride the pink and orange wave and then we can see too how is this going to work on top and be flat is it, is it going to be flat enough that's what i'm that's what i was thinking i had like half a thought there and then i might mark make on top of this but i'm just kind of riding a little wave here just paint where it feels good there's nothing specific I'm going for I'm just trying to figure out what does this paint do and how do I like it and what happens if I water it down with white and use it solid and all kinds of yummy stuff going on today and I might put stencils on top and see how that works maybe not it's kind of just what feels good what what direction are we feeling? Okay, now we're a little bit all over the place, aren't we? That's all right. When you're sitting down to play, there is no end goal in mind. I'm not trying to create a collection. I'm not trying to add to something I've already done. I'm not looking for some specific outcome. I'm playing. And I just want to see where does this go in that play. Oh, look at all that fun stuff. Okay, now I'm kind of thinking that I need some white added on top of here. So, let me put these lids on here. You don't know how good I am at knocking a thing of paint over. <laughs> Making the biggest mess you've ever seen. Oh, do we want a touch of fluorescent pink? I don't know. I'm kind of feeling what I got going on here now. Um, so I'm kind of thinking getting some of this in the lid so it'd be easy to grab. Would this look good through my punchinella? Let's see. You know, because we struggle finding the perfect white to, oh, look at that. So that's probably heavier than I needed to go. So let's be a little more gentle. Oh, I got it on the back side too. That's okay. If it's doing something you didn't want it to do, get your paintbrush, which is all wet because I threw it in that, and smooth it around. <laughs> Ooh, and that's pretty with the white in there though. Maybe we just need to go back with some more white. I'm feeling it. Let's just do it. I actually liked that texture there. Yes. Me likey bikey. Alright, let's try let's try again. Ooh, let's try a different stencil. Let's just see. Alright, it's all about play. I'm obsessed with this little damask stencil lately. Still a little bit of white there. <gasps> oh, look at that. Ooh, see, I know I'd use this in a project this week. But I don't even care. Totally different look and feel that we're getting here with a little bit of white 
a lot less white than I was trying to start with. We'll say that a little less white and it is perfect. Okay. That is so lovely. So lovely. I like pretty art, lovely, pretty art. Ooh, let's just use all this paint over here. <laughs> that was pretty, pretty. I need some more white. All right, let's put a little white out. pretty pretty all right so I do like the sew flat as stencil white oh yeah okay so I'm definitely liking that okay that's pretty let's put those back in some water those are my Princeton Umbria brushes ones they're filberts different size filberts that I was painting with one was uh, a number four and I think this other one's like a number like a three eighths or a number eight or something like that okay so I'm loving that got my little sponges thrown in water I don't remember what the stencil is but I'll link it below if I can find it and the other one's punchinella it's just the sequin waste the um so now I'm kind of thinking okay what else do we want to do I've got some yummy woodies here so I need to make sure this is dry and I think this is the perfect project to experiment with woodies on because I've got these colors that I think would definitely work perfect with these same basic colors that I was already using oh and they're so smooth they're like drawing with a gigantic crayon these are water soluble also um, these are the three in one woodies, but I'm not gonna water, add water to the top of these. I want, I want actual marks. And then maybe draw around those marks and just see like how interesting can we make our marks. And then we can do some dots. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right, these are so bright and fun. Now let's peel the tape and see what we even made. I did some scribble and some dots and just kind of added to what I was already kind of feeling. And it's a hot mess, hot mess. But you know me, I love a hot mess. And then we can peel it and think, does it have enough? Are the pieces finished? We can cut these apart and just kind of evaluate them. And I just want to see what we end up with. Okay. Because I can tell you right now, I'm already loving one for sure. You know, my goal is to do a bunch of learning, experimenting, what feels good. And then if I end up with one that I love, then I consider that a win. Oh, these would be such pretty cards. Like if you, look at that, I love this one right here. Okay, this one, I feel like it needs some more. I don't feel like it's got enough. And I don't know, I don't know that the other ones have enough yet. Like for some reason, this one is definitely finished for me. And so on these other ones, I would evaluate each one and then go, okay, what else does it need? So let's cut them apart so we could actually judge them based on each one separately so that we don't have the other ones um, clouding our thoughts. 
and then I would after I was for sure done I would straighten up these edges so that they were all the same size because the way I'm chopping them is just all over the place but I would go trim whatever one I loved whichever ones I loved I would trim those up and make sure that they were definitely the same size okay so this one definitely my favorite one and I feel like it's done so I'd actually come back and go ahead and trim that and I don't get exact I'm eyeballing it I just want it to be close I just don't want two sides to be really big and two sides to be really tight <gasps> definitely my favorite look at that one oh, 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 oh. okay and then I would just evaluate each of the other ones and think does it need more what does it need I really like this one right here too okay so this one I'm kind of feeling maybe maybe we need some white dots maybe that would do it for me let's get my Posca pen out and add some dots let's see let's just do it down here And I love, love how flat this paint is. That's exactly what I'm going for when I do acrylic paint mixed with gesso. Because the gesso kind of makes the acrylic paint more spreadable and it makes it flat. And it gives it a texture so that you can add other stuff on top like pastels or, you know, woodies or whatever. Look at that. <gasps> See, dots are kind of magical. And I think that kind of added the last bit that that needed. Look how that just finished that one off. Love it. Okay, so then you would just evaluate your other pieces and say, well, what else does this one need? Kind of like in this one this way. Let's go ahead and dot it up. <laughs> you got to work through the crazy hot mess, work past the ugly, and then you get to a point where you're like, wow, look at that thing I just created. Because I'm just as surprised every time as you are. And I love that about creating. I love that. Where did we get today? Peeling that tape is kind of magic. Ha. <sighs> Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm feeling better about this one. I feel like it kind of needs still some more contrast though. Like, like we didn't get a dark anything in there. Oh yeah, that, that's exactly, we needed that little bit of a finishing darker shade. Doesn't have to be black, doesn't have to be super dark but it definitely needed to be an, another touch of contrast pulling out these corners <gasps> look at that okay so that's what I want you to do with your pieces get to a point where you're like I think I'm done I know I love one there's three there I love those three and then evaluate what could you add to it to finish that off what does it need and see where you can end up so I hope you enjoyed intuitive painting with me today using some yummy so flat colors um, and really we kind of stuck in a very tight color palette with the nap uh, naphthal pink the cadmium orange and the titanium white look how pretty these are hope you had fun and if you want to show me what you're working on you can tag me at instagram at two little owls art you can join the facebook group i have for peeps um, and i'll link everything below and can't wait to see if you try out some of these so flat colors how they work out for you and i'll see you next time <music>